just take my radio Head down to Mexico I might even take my old guitar I'll be playing my radio Right into Mexico Hey, good evening folks. Uh, Revolutionary Brewer here. Uh, we're sitting here in the middle of the summer. The dog days are here. The thermometer is really rising. It's about, usually it's about 30 degrees here in the days. So for you guys south of the border, we're well up over 90, especially with the humidity. So what's better to cool down than an ice cold beer? And what's one of the best summer beers? This is uh, Cooper's Cerveza, straight from Mexico. Well, not straight from Mexico, but uh, it's, uh, I guess it's supposed to be styled after Corona, so with that in mind, we'll give it a try in a nice Corona glass. Normally, I wouldn't drink out of a glass this small, because I don't even know who drinks beer from glasses like this, but we'll give it a shot, and now we'll see how this turns out. Once again, this is uh, Cooper's uh, Mexican Cerveza, so... We'll give it a pour and uh, see what we get. Looks like a nice light beer. And of course that's the Cerveza style. Uh, nice light beer, uh, not much of a head on it. Uh, and look at that, clear as a bell. That's your typical uh, Cerveza style, really. That's about the way it goes, as you can see. You can see right through it, nice and light. Uh, let's take a test. Now, um, like I said, I guess this is supposed to be uh, similar to Corona. I don't really like Corona, but, you know, I was in the brew shop one day and it was really hot and I said, let's give it a shot because it may be a little bit different. Um, so let's have a taste. Wow, that's th terrific. Yeah. What can you say about Cooper's? Always a quality product, but this is absolutely fabulous. Um, you want a summer beer? Uh, this is A1. Let me have another little nip of this. This is only uh, this has only been in the bottles for maybe three weeks, so it's not even fully matured. But here's what I'm going to compare it to. It is similar to Corona but it's not skunked. It, you guys, if you've ever drank a Corona, you know to deal with them. They come in the clear bottles. Uh, sometimes you'll go in the uh, your local beer store, liquor store, whatever sells them, supermarket, and you just see these big clear bottles of Corona. They're sitting on, they're sitting by the window, the sunlight's banging off them, the UV lights from the ceiling's banging off them. It, they're skunked long before you get them to your house. And it's just every bottle of Corona tastes skunky. Yeah, people put lime in them to drink, maybe to try to, to hide the skunky taste. I don't know. But this is what Corona should be like. It's a nice, crisp, light, refreshing beer. This is amazing that you can make this from a kit. Oh, that's as un but it's a terrific beer. Now let me show you. I actually um um I like this beer so much I picked up another can. So this is what it comes in, just like a big can like this. So easy to make, and I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit. So uh what I'm gonna do before I actually go on to talk about brewing this beer a little bit further, I'm going to uh tell you how I made it. Just the old standard, one Cooper's Mexican Cerveza kit, a pound and a half of liquid light malt extract, and a pound and a half of high malt glucose. And uh, I brewed this up to 21 liters. Usually I do 20 liters, but Cerveza is supposed to be a little bit lighter, so I went 21. Why not? Not going to make a difference, probably coming in at about 4.8%. Just estimating, about 4.8%. Uh, so I'm going to give this one, this, it's an amazing beer. This is one of my favorite kits, and this is going right in the rotation. No question about that. I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5. I think this might be, I don't know if I'm giving anything else over 4, but this is 4.5. I mean, it's a great kit. It nails it spot on what a nice, light Mexican cerveza should be like. 
It's lightly hopped. It's got a nice little refreshing hop taste to it, and it's so light. And as you can see, clear and crisp. And man, on a hot summer day, this will knock the socks off a of lemonade. Go for one of these. So again, I'm going to score this a four and a half out of five. Now, I did want to talk a little bit something about these uh, can kits. And in the summer, this is what I'm doing exclusively, is can kits. Uh, you know, I don't want to stand over a hot stove when it's 30 degrees, the sun pounding in, you know, got sweat dripping down. I don't want to stand over a stove boiling in hops, you know, um, uh, steeping my specialty grains. I want to knock a kit out in 25 minutes get it brewing, uh, put it in the closet, and, uh, you know, a couple weeks later have beer ready to go. That's that's what I'm looking for in the summer. But I've always been, uh, for those who know me, a big proponent of these can kits. I'm like, you don't need anything else but these can kits, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stray from them. I'm not really going to do any different kinds of brewing, because I'm perfectly happy with the can kits. But... All right, so I did move on, and uh, in the winter time, probably about every, I'll do a couple can kits, and then I'll switch over. I did get into the uh, malt uh, extract kits, where you get the malt extract, the, uh, the hops to boil in, the grains to steep, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, how do I put this? <clears throat> From my opinion, and this is just my opinion you can make a little bit better uh, premium quality beer from the the malt kits where you actually boil in the grains and the hops and stuff like that. From my experience, all things being even, if you brew the two kits uh, to, uh, you know, up to standard, you, I find you can get a little bit better quality. Now, it's going to take you more work. Like I said, you got to boil those hops in. you got to, you know, steep your grains. Not a whole lot more work, just a little bit more. That's all. But um, basically, that's not to say that you can't make great beer from these can kits, because you can. These kits, if you pay attention, and the two key things with these kits, uh, or any brew, sanitation, no matter what kind of what kind of brew you're making, whether it's home brewing, and the same thing in commercial breweries. You need to make sure everything is clean and sanitized. And temperature control, that's the, that's the other key. Those are the two big things. You want to brew these kits. I know it says in the instructions it can go up to 80 degrees or whatever. You want to keep these things under 70. Even the ales, uh, if you can brew them in the high 60s, that's fine. The lager, brew them even lower. I mean, you want to keep everything under 70, and that's going to produce your best beer. As far as sanitation goes, uh, just be clean and make sure everything's sanitized. You don't got to go crazy. Like, uh, I had people you email me on YouTube. Uh, I, I had to laugh. Um, one guy emailed me, and he had actually an eyebrow just before he's putting the top on. His fermenter fell in, just like, or an eyelash, I should say. And he said, you know, he says, I thought this was going to be a great beer. Do you think I should dump it? I'm like, what, are you crazy? No. Like, don't don't get too crazy with the sanitation. I mean, it, you know, what we're trying to do is by keeping everything clean and sanitizing everything is kill the maximum amount of germs possible. It's not going to be sterile. I mean, if an eyelash falls in, an eyelash falls in. It's 99.9% .9 chance it's not going to hurt your beer at all. I mean, I've dropped weird things in the bucket. Don't worry about it. But uh, anyways, I'm kind of getting long on the video. So once again, Cooper's Mexican Cerveza, solid 4.5 out of 5. And uh, these kits just came to my area. So this was like... Uh, you know, it's the summertime. I don't really like, um, don't like Corona, but I'm going to get this. And I had an unbelievable kit. This is a, a must uh, for any Coopers fans. If you haven't tried it, get out and try one of these. So, uh, anyways, that's it for tonight. Uh, keep on brewing. Enjoy the summer. Cheers, and uh, we'll see you next time.